Hello, amateur radio operators and electronics experimenters worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I do this channel. I also write the Ask Dave column for QST. If you see me at a ham fest, please stop me and say hello. I would love to meet you and talk about you and your station. Now this question right here is from that giant pile of questions that's four years old that was recently uncovered hiding in my email. So I'm sure that Yanni has already figured this out. But the thing is, other people could have the same question. He has a flat dipole antenna. So it's not an inverted V. It's flat across the top. And since he's not mentioning how it is fed, I assume it's center fed although it can be off-center fed or end fed. I have an SGC230HF smart antenna tuner, and after he installed everything, the SWR was fine, and I tested all the channels to different locations. Sounds like you're coming to this world from CB, where they do call them channels. Also, if you go on VHF, there is a specific channelization to the band. That is not true on HF up to 29 megahertz. Beyond that, there's some FM and there's three channels up there. But below that, people often try to get on a frequency such that the first digit after the dot is zero. So it's all zeros. So like 7240 kilohertz, 7241 kilohertz, something like that. And this actually helps you tune in a station because most people are doing that. There's nothing about HF that says you have to do that. In fact, some young ham told me I was off frequency because I had just tuned in his station, his CQ, real quick. wasn't exactly on his frequency, so I just smiled, tuned it in better, and, and went on with the QSO. Okay, he's installing a flat dipole antenna with the SGC230HF Smart Antenna Tuner. After installation, he checked it, and the SWR was fine. Now, by fine with an antenna tuner, you're probably at an SWR of 1.5 or less. 1.5 or less is perfectly acceptable. And he tested it in all different frequencies and so on, was very happy. But after two days, he's showing an SWR of 3.5 up to 3.7, which is beyond what you want to run a regular radio into. Now, a radio such as the ICOM 7300, which is this radio right here, designed so it has an internal antenna tuner that will tune up to a 3 to 1 SWR. So it's only designed to tune things that are slightly off tune. If you're going to tune something with a bigger problem, you want to use automatic or manual antenna tuner, but an external tuner uh, to what you're doing. I didn't make any changes. Not it's saying like this, I check the power, it's fine, the tuner gets full power. Okay, now understand that just because the radio says it's putting out 100 watts doesn't mean it is. Let's take a look at this. On the multi-knob right here, this is the RF power, 100%, which is 100 watts. So you can turn the power down like if I were doing FT8, I might come down to 25 watts or something like that. Now, if this says full power... 100 watts, but it's transmitting into a poor load, it will drop the power off without necessarily telling you that it is doing so. Now, down over here, you've got your S meter, and the S meter can be a variety of things. See, when I touch it, it changes right there. You can pick power out, and you'll see it come down over there. This up here is what the radio is set as. This over here is what it's actually doing. Okay. Now, as to what happened to your antenna. First of all, let's make thing, sure you've got everything in the right order. Okay, you're going to have your radio here. And if you have a separate SWR meter, it goes here. And then the tuner. Okay. And then this goes to the antenna. Now, what you do is you put a small signal out here, like you go into CW mode, okay, so you can hold the key down, so you have a solid amount, or you can press on this, you see the tuner, I have the tuner in normally, but here it's out, okay, and if I were to push that again, and then hold this in, you can see that it tunes, 
so that it gets a very good SWR. And right now it's just uh, reading signal strength. But if you're going to use an external tuner, you make sure that the tuner in your radio is off. So tuner here is off. And so you're going to use this to tune. So you put a small amount, 5 watts, 10 watts, will do fine. You tune the tuner for the lowest SWR. I usually tune it for the min reflected power uh, when I'm using an SWR meter. The reason that I do that is you see over here on this power meter right here, it's forward and reflected power. Now, the way to tell the SWR is you look where the needles cross. The problem is the needles are dancing around and pushing around. Now, if I press the tuner on this thing, hit tune, a little bit of power goes out and takes care of that. Now, it's easier to just tune for minimum reflected power, okay? And you can read off the actual SWR if you want. But this is where you twiddle the knobs. There's usually three knobs. One is marked transmitter, one is marked antenna, and the middle one is inductance. And the diagram for what's going on in there is you have a capacitor, an inductor, and another capacitor, and then ground comes through here, touches the bottom of the inductor. This is variable, this is variable, this is variable. Okay? Now the way you tune is you tune for max noise on receiving side. You tune this by turning this knob back and forth, and it'll usually stay there. Then you tune this one for lowest SWR. Then you tune this one for lowest SWR. Having done that, you go back and tune this one for lowest SWR, and you'll go back and forth between them until it gets to the point where you've got the lowest possible SWR out. Note that you're reading it before it goes in there. Now, if this was working on a given frequency, Note that you'll have to retune as you go across the band. Certainly you will have to retune if you go to a different band, depending on the antenna and what it does. Now I know there are a lot of people who like to take a N-fed 40 through 10 meter antenna and use a real wide range tuner to tune it on 80. You're dissipating a lot of heat in the tuner and you're not really getting anything coming out except a few watts. You might work something, probably not, okay? Use the antenna the way it's designed. Right now, I have an 80 through 10 N-fed half wave up. Happens to be made by a company called Guzizu in China. They make open source things and make them available, and that's, that's what I've got out there. Okay, and it works really well. Now, if this suddenly changes on you, you know, you, you set it up for some frequency and it was tuned, and now you're coming onto that frequency and trying to do this over again, and something has changed. Something has come loose. This can come loose. This can come loose. You know, anywhere in here, anything, including here, or something's happened to the antenna, it's fallen down, or maybe the coax up here isn't connected right. This is in the wind. It gets blown around quite a bit. Okay, you want to find what changed what changed in here and get that fixed because if you've got an antenna that's stable okay it's always up there the tuner gives you you know certain dial readings when you get your minimum swr here by the way tuning for one to one is a near impossibility for a variety of reasons but if it's under 1.5 to one everything is happy and then the radio remember tuner is off in there and you're using this tuner over here. If you put this tuner in bypass, then you can use this tuner. But don't make the two fight each other, okay? Because you're measuring your SWR here, or if you're like me right here, so if I press tune, okay, it turns out the SWR is very low when you go to transmit. And it's just really cool that way. A lot of times the SWR meter is built into this but sometimes they aren't. Like here, I've got a separate SWR meter that's designed to handle up to 3,000 watts, so I can use this with my amplifier to see how much power I'm getting back pushed into the amplifier. What I try to do is make sure all my antennas are reasonably tuned so that this will work with the amplifier, because I have no tuner for the amplifier. That would cost me more than the amplifier cost me, so I don't have one. Anyway, this tells you a little bit about the tuning. Something changed. Okay, SWRs don't change by that much. 
if you've got a problem. If you've got it up to three to one, okay, use the internal rigs tuner and that'll bring it down to where it's very comfortable with it. Now, the reason that you don't always get down to one to one is because you've got stray reactants running everywhere. Okay, the antenna, besides being 50 ohms, has some sort of a phase shift to it. And we call that the phase angle. Okay, and you're going to still get a little bit of that. An actual dipole antenna that is at 50 ohms, let's say it's at 50 ohms, that means that it's resonant frequency. You've got it to the point where the reactances are equal. The problem is with most antennas, that's not the place where you get 50 ohms. You can have an antenna tuned perfectly, except that the impedance at the feed point is actually 30 ohms. So you get it down to 30 ohms, and yeah, you look at your tuner, and you look at your antenna analyzer and realize the reactance, the inductive reactance, matches the capacitive reactants, so you have zero reactants, but you're still getting a 1.6 to 1 SWR. That's because the feed point of a dipole can be anywhere from 30 to 70 ohms, okay? And that's why I say under 1.5 to 1 or 1.6 to 1 is the best way to do it. Now, if you put a proper tuner in there, you can kind of fake it up to 50 ohms, but you're still probably not going to get a perfect SWR on that thing. Uh, what you read when you set the power is the what you want. Uh, you can read on what's actually going out or on a separate meter what's actually going out. And if the SWR is bad, all modern transceivers will lower the power. The problem is if you send power to a mismatch, part of that power is reflected. It comes right at you the other way. Now, the problem is it hits the tuner and it gets back there and back there and it keeps doing this kind of thing and eventually it gets to the point where you're starting to heat the coax and you're not getting all your power to the antenna. Now, if you don't have the tuner, that power is going right back into the finals in your amplifier and that's not where you want it. That's why the radio backs off. So if you're getting 25 watts back Amplifier transistors have certain maximum settings on them. What it will do is back out the going out power so that the sum of the going out and the coming back is less than the 100 watts that the amplifier is built to work with. Okay, so that's what I would say with that. The thing about antenna tuners, if you put up something like a horizontal loop antenna, and it's full wavelength around, so you make it 80 meters all the way around, it will tune on 80 meters. And if you put like a ballon, four to one ballon up at the feed point, bring coax down to the shack, you ground it so you don't get RF into the shack and all that kind of stuff, the transmitter will think it's putting out 100 watts. But what's happening, it's sending the 100 watts out, some comes back because of the reactants of the antenna. Remember, capacitors and inductors by themselves do not dissipate energy. They store it and then they release it. The thing that dissipates energy is resistance. So you've got resistance in the coax cable itself. This is not the characteristic impedance. That's something entirely different. The characteristic impedance is simply the ratio of the RF voltage to the RF current both in RMS or both in peak or whatever. You get the same ratio, okay? The resistance is the ohmic resistance of the wiring. And as you go back and forth like this, each pass loses a certain amount of power in the resistance, the ohmic resistance. And if you've got a really bad SWR, yeah, you can tune it, it'll work. But a lot of that power is either being dissipated in the tuner or in the coax or in the ballon. Okay, not good places to do it. Now, the problem with a horizontal full wavelength loop, it does allow you to work on all bands uh, from 80 on up to 10, sometimes on 6, but it's radiating with a very strange radiation pattern. If you are going to put up a multiband antenna for HF, I would recommend an NFED half wave because they're much less expensive. There's a kit for one available on the ARRL website for less than $100. And actually, if you attach a longer piece of wire on it, it'll work on 80 meters too. I know that because I've done it. Now, the thing that you've got to keep in mind
Even an NFED half wave might take a little tuning tweaking with your rig, but it'll be well within what the rig will do. Now it'll only cover part of 80 meters because 80 meters is such a wide band compared to its fundamental frequency. So, you know, you can do that. I have my NFED half wave set up right now with my little whisper transmitter and it sends out a signal on 80 and then one on 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. And then I can look up the results on the internet. I'll do another video about that soon. So, there you have it. Everything you wanted to know, plus much more, on antenna tuners that seem to be not repeating themselves. Something is loose. Now, one of the most common things to get loose, the old style coax connectors, which are solder connectors. Uh, you can solder the center uh, conductor very well, very easily, but soldering the outer braid to the connector is just plain hard. So some people just leave it with a mechanical connection, they screw it down on the cable and so on. That's not good. You can go with crimp connectors where you can crimp the outer connector and then solder the inner conductor. Those work too. However, you're crimping against the plastic sheathing. The plastic will flow with time. So if that gives you a bad connection, just take a pair of pliers and squash it and it'll work fine. Okay. In fact, I wrote about that in one of my Ask Dave columns. So there you have it. Wow, all that for free? There you go. Now, I do want to mention the $2 special. This is a $2 bill. It's legitimate U.S. currency. It's got a picture of the signing of the Declaration of Independence on the back. If you sign up on Patreon for the $2 level or more, we will send you, as a token of our appreciation, Tegan and I will send you a genuine $2 bill. So when you sign up for Patreon or PayPal or whatever, Include your call sign in there somewhere so that we can look up your call sign and know where to send the $2 bill. If you don't get your $2 bill, drop us a line and give us your call sign or uh, email me at askdave at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G. Okay? So there you have it. Man, all that fun on antennas in one video. You have a great evening. 73.